Everyone else is? Okay, so uh, yes, as I said, my name is Helen Oliver and I am a postdoc at the University of Cambridge. I'm actually a computer scientist, but my work intersects with a lot of um, narrative and storytelling work, uh, as well as um, wearable technology. So um, the title of this talk is Every Brutal Choice Has Elegance Grace, because every, um, you, you really, can't overanalyze the visual elements of this TV show. Um, if you think you're overthinking it, you are not. Um, and the wonderful thing about the way it's presented, the symbolism and the visual clues, is that it the show itself kind of shows you how to decode its own symbolism as you go along. And anybody who has any familiarity with popular culture of recent years um, of the Hollywood type will have, a, will have a handle on it. For example, one thing that Brian Fuller likes to do is cast people in roles where the characters have something in common with previous roles they've played. So on the left, uh, this is the character Alana Bloom, whose um, color symbolism is the most visible of all the characters. So I'm going to um, use her as the focal point. Um, Alana Bloom is a psychiatrist who consults for the behavioral analysis unit that is run by Jack Crawford, who is on the right here in blue. He is played by Lawrence Fishburne, who previously played Morpheus, as we all know, and um, uh, Caroline Davana previously in Wonderfalls played a character who likes beer the same way Alana does, and she's, she has familiarity with the mental health system. Um, so the very, very foregrounded colors here are red and blue. Um, and these are the colors that are sort of our way in. Um, because uh, it's pretty well known amongst color theorists and art historians, which I'm not, but I do know that the colors red and blue were sort of meant to represent the earthly and the heavenly, um, but it wasn't quite um, completely binary. Sometimes red was heavenly, sometimes blue was heavenly and vice versa. But the character in the middle here, this is a mosaic at a um, at Santa Polina Nuovo in Ravenna, and in the middle uh, is Jesus in purple. And so the red and the blue angels are separating the sheep from the goats, and uh, Jesus is king, he has purple, it's his decision in the end, he's in charge. So I'm just going to go forth. Um, and again, I counted all the outfits worn by Alana Bloom in season one. And from this bar chart, you can see that the most frequently appearing color is red, followed by blue. Um, and here I've shown the distribution of outfits across all the episodes of season one. And if you look at the middle of season one, which is kind of where the pivot point is for the plot that is mostly red so i'm going to click through every outfit that alana wears throughout season one you can see a lot of blue red as well as black white and red and colors that are close to red that i think are probably functionally red at least some of the time uh and i like i always like to stop and point out this um, this outfit here because it's uh, orange and blue and the pattern on the dress um, it's little blue pac-men eating their way around the dress so that's the kind of symbolism that I could dive into for hours at a time and linger on each outfit but I won't I'm just going to skim the surface today um, so now we're going to compare season one with season two because things change in season two. Um, in season two, Alana has to choose whether to trust Will Graham, who's accused of multiple murders, or whether to trust Hannibal, who also eventually comes to be accused of multiple murders, which spoiler, he actually did do. This may shock you. Um, and you can see that in season two, there's red and blue are just about neck and neck. Um, in terms of frequency. 
So there's season one across the episodes again, and here's season two. And you can see that in the middle, the balance point of season two, everything has turned blue. Now, recall the choice that Morpheus offered, the red pill or the blue pill. So here are all the season two outfits that Alana wears in chronological order. And here is the, the here's the kind of the turning point to this last blue wrap dress. She's actually at um, a cocktail party held by Hannibal. And what's happening there, what's causing her to look so indignant is that Hannibal is being questioned very publicly by Jack Crawford, who uh, is there because he thinks that the food is people. But clever Hannibal has anticipated this possibility. So none of the food at this cocktail party is actually people even though it usually is. And this is how that evening ends. Um, and here is, I'm just going to sort of take a detour because this is a comparison I just cannot resist making. Surely I'm not the only one who spotted this. But anyway, so, and as the evening progresses, this is where we end up. And the sheet that Hannibal is pulling over her Alana while she sleeps, is a deep midnight blue. So if you recall Morpheus's words, uh, take the blue pill, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. Um, now Hannibal is, has sedated Alana and he's going off to murder someone. So he wants to make sure she's nice and, uh, and firmly asleep. And the next outfit she wears is when Jack Crawford comes around the next morning to ask Hannibal about the murder. And she comes out of the bedroom wearing his shirt and presents herself as his alibi. And if you take a look at that shirt, you'll notice that it looks like a straight jacket. So here we are, we're in blue mode, um, but there's some green, what is that about? And then some red and black and white and some flaming red, a balance of red and blue. Ooh, this is getting, this is getting tense. This is getting tense people. And now we've got, something that looks purple. And here, although it's very hard to see because everything in this show is always very hard to see, Alana is pointing a gun at Hannibal in the season finale and she's wearing purple. Um, so I'll talk about what green and purple are about in a second, but needless to say, uh, Hannibal does not get shot. Alana gets horribly injured and things change in her worldview. So here's season one again, here's season two again, and here's what season three looks like for Alana. There's hardly any blue. The main color combinations are red with black and white. So that's quite meaningful as well. Um, so here we are. Season one, a red season, season two, kind of blue season and season three, black and white and red all over practically. So I'm going to click through the season three outfits. Um, and this first one was only seen in the promos, but it's it's significant because, uh, well, I'll explain that in a bit, but we're seeing a lot of black to begin with and then some red. This is where Alana decides to um, go on the hunt and uh, track down the escaped Hannibal and bring him to justice. And so notice, by the way, this very Hannibal-esque looking plaid trouser suit. In the first two seasons, Alana almost never wears trousers if she does their skinny jeans when she's walking dogs in the woods. And then in season three, she flips and wears almost entirely um, trouser suits. There's only one skirt and we don't see it because she's standing behind a table. So we're going along. And in this half of the season, Alana is actually Hannibal's jailer because she succeeded in, in, capture, in capturing him in the effort to capture him. And things are starting to turn to shades of gray. So, and then here at the end of the season, she's escaping uh, to a safe house with the rest of her family and she's back into the red, white and black. So this is the first episode of the second half of the season. Um, and that plexiglass, that strong and sturdy plexiglass, which she is looking through, is the containing um, barrier behind which Hannibal is looking out at her. And as you can see, she's wearing a red trouser suit. Now, I mentioned green. Green is the emblematic color of the other main character and Hannibal's antagonist. Mm, maybe. 
Um, and this is the character who has what the others kind of treat as almost superpowers. He has the ability to assume other people's points of view, which is not really Alana's strong point, um, but it is his. Um, he's almost pathologically empathic and it's, it's quite painful for him. And this green jacket we see constantly throughout the first two seasons. Um, and it's almost like his superhero outfit. Like for example, he gets pulled out of a lecture to attend a crime scene and he changes out of his tweed lecturing jacket and into his green field jacket. So green is the color of intuition. Somebody who's wearing red is trying to be, trying to think rationally. And somebody who's wearing blue is kind of in a state of illusion. But somebody who's wearing green is attuned to their intuition. And it doesn't mean that they're necessarily right, but they are more likely to be right when they're wearing green than they are when they're wearing any other, any other color. So there he is in green again. He sleeps in uh, green boxer shorts and vest. And he's uh, this is in season one where he's hallucinatorily sleepwalked out onto his own roof. And then at the end of the season one, he gets jailed for being right too much. Uh, Hannibal has framed him for murder and he is in a green jumpsuit when he's in jail, uh, whereas other characters are not necessarily, their jumpsuits are not necessarily green. Uh, so interesting choice there. And then halfway through season two, Will Graham gets let out of jail and he spends the episode kind of futilely trying to get people to understand that the fact that he has been found to be not the murderer means that somebody else is a murderer, that the fact that he has been framed means that somebody is framing him and that person is at large and that person's name begins with H and ends with Annabelle, but nobody seems to get it. And finally, he accepts that he has to turn himself into a honey trap um, to lure Hannibal out into the open. And so this is the outfit he wears to resume his therapy. And it is a red shirt, partly because he's trying to think rationally and partly because he's offering himself as the red shirt, sacrificial Star Trek character. Um, so this is where it gets interesting. Now for the rest of season two, after he resumes his therapy, uh, he's in shades of what look like gray, although on the left, the shirt is actually green, which is very difficult to tell. We rarely see him in an outfit that doesn't have some green in it, but I haven't tried to illustrate it because we can't really see it. Um, and it's only when you're trying to replicate the outfits and banging your head against a wall with the search that you find out that the gray shirt you bought in Triumph is actually a green shirt and you have to start all over again. But you can see the green much more vividly in, um, in one of these later episodes. Um, and then we, um, so, so then everything goes horribly wrong and the um, girl who is kind of the sacrificial deer in all this, uh, she's in this picture on the right and this is her ghost. So in season three, everybody gets murdered in Hannibal's kitchen. Um, Abigail doesn't survive, but Will does. And he goes on a quest throughout Europe to, to understand and capture Hannibal. And part of this is trying to work through his emotions and get into Hannibal's mindset. And this is the last time we see him in a field jacket that could be construed as green. It's khaki, but it's also kind of green. And we, we then, this is the first episode. And in the next episode, he's gone over to blue. Um, and so this is where he's gone to Hannibal's ancestral estate to try and understand him. And the blue of illusion is him immersing himself in Hannibal's mindset. And so part of it is that he's also kind of in the role of a quasi policeman sort of kind of, because he is kind of trying to apprehend Hannibal sort of in a non-committal way. Um, and then in the middle of the season, Hannibal is captured and then there's a long time gap and Will goes off to get married and lead, lead a normal life. And this is him seen from Jack Crawford's point of view because Jack Crawford is going to him to drag him back out into the, into the field and ruin his normal life. But the blue of this jacket suggests that it is kind of an illusion and so he goes back into the field and, but the point is he's not wearing green anymore. 
He's in blue because it's all kind of an illusion. Now here's Alana Bloom in green. Her shade of green is different from Will's shade of green. Will's kind of earthy and green. And Alana is more kind of, a, has more kind of a peacock green. And there's that because of pride is a big important part of her, her personality. Um, and I will talk about this more in a bit, but I'd like you to take a look at her skirt here. It's very hard to see as always, but the skirt has a chain link print and the links are connected. Now back to the red and blue and purple symbolism again. The character wearing purple is the character who thinks they are in charge in, in a particular scene. So here is Hannibal in season one with a patient who is kind of boring and desperate to be Hannibal's friend. And Hannibal is in purple and he kind of puts this patient in his place. Uh, and here then is Hannibal going to see his own therapist, Bedelia du Maurier, and Bedelia is in purple. And in the same session, Bedelia crushes Hannibal like a grape. And then we see Alana Bloom's kind of trying to take control of the situation that's gone horribly wrong by the end of season two. Um, and this dress also has a chain link print and the chains are not connected. So she's kind of, this is a sort of example of how it's kind of not working. Um, and the green outfit is, is the one where she is seeing things the way they are and the pink and blue, which make purple outfit is her trying to make her world makes sense again a little bit by trying to appeal to the powers that be to exercise their powers benevolently and it just doesn't really work. So I'm going to flip now to the colors black and white and uh, the character on the left here is Bella Crawford who is Jack Crawford's wife who unbeknownst to him has terminal lung cancer and that's why she's gone to see Hannibal for therapy and you can see that she's wearing um, color blocked black and white and here's another character who's wearing color block black and white this is margot verger unveiling a pregnancy test which is part of a um part of a scheme that she hopes will get her out from under her cruel brother's control um so these are characters who are dealing with issues of life and death and they are in black and white and here is hannibal's dining table and the food in those dishes is in fact people. And if you look closely, you can see that the dining table is inlaid with a checkerboard pattern because the dining table is the chessboard on which Hannibal plays out the game of life and death. And as I mentioned earlier, Alana's season three suit, and this came out in the promos. So we saw this before we saw anything else about Alana in season three, before the season even started. She's wearing a plaid suit, which is very similar to the kinds of suits that Hannibal wears. It is red, black, and white, and it is checkered. So generally speaking, and I don't want to overstate this because plaids and checks are a standard pattern in menswear, um, but generally speaking, a character wearing plaid is kind of involved somehow to some extent in this game of, of life, death, cops and robbers. And I'm just going to take a look at the two characters who almost never wear plaid on the two occasions when they do wear plaid. On the left is Abigail Hobbs. Abigail doesn't want to play any game. All she wants is to survive. And this is the only time we see her in plaid and it is a plaid scarf given to her by Alana Bloom to hide the scar on her neck where her father um, cut her throat. Um, and on the right here, uh, which you can also, again, probably not really see, the waistcoat that she's wearing is also plaid. And you'll also notice that Margot is dressing to protect her neck as well. Um, Margot knows the whole story. And um, Margot's brother is a billionaire who is a sadist and has power over her, which he exerts extremely cruelly. Um, and she is sent to therapy with Hannibal for trying to kill her brother. And she levels with him almost immediately. Um, she isn't interested in playing any game. She's only interested in survival. And so that is the one and only time we ever see her in plaid when she meets Alana for the first time and joins Alana's scheme to capture Hannibal and 
the episode in which they do sort of capture Hannibal is another interesting one for costume. And I've got a book recommendation for you here. Um, there was a famous book in the 90s called Women Who Run With The Wolves. And this book dedicates an entire chapter to the Russian fairy tale, Vasilisa the Beautiful. Vasilisa is a girl who is treated cruelly by her step family and she has to go into the woods and visit Baba Yaga um, to get wisdom basically and defeat her cruel step family. And in this scene, notice the similar shape between Alana's coat and the sarafan that Vasilisa is wearing. And she goes uh, into the barn where Mason has Hannibal chained up to ask him for answers and, and basically let him loose to, to take down the cruel supervillain Mason. Um, and the coat is black and white and red all over. And the chapter that I'm talking about in the book, Women Who Run With the Wolves, talks about the important symbolism of red, white, and black, which also feature in the version of the fairy tale that she, that the author analyzes about how elemental they are and how very close to life and death they are. Um, and the combination of black, white, and red is quite an important one for Alana because people say that her character doesn't have very much agency in the narrative, but actually she does quite a bit to push the plot along. It's just that she's operating on a set of assumptions that aren't the same as the audience has, but she is exercising her agency quite a bit. So every time we see her in red, white, and black, it's a point where she is, is setting up a new game. So the first time we see it is in season one, where she persuades Will to go to Hannibal for therapy to let him go back into the field as an FBI agent. The next time she is confronting... Um, a patient who has been persuaded by Dr. Chilton that he is the serial killer that the FBI are hunting when he actually isn't. So she goes to visit him in her red, white, and black outfit and, persu and persuade him to take action against Dr. Chilton's malpractice. And in this outfit, she has gone to visit Will at home um, and sort of confront her romantic feelings for him. In this outfit, she's gone to confront Dr. Chilton because Gideon has escaped and is, uh, and is a, a murdering people. And it's basically partly because of Chilton's malpractice. And here we're in season two and the person she's looking at because she's looking off to the side, she's looking at Jack Crawford asking Will Graham incarcerated about a murder that has taken place um, and basically, this is the murder of um, of an important character, and this will set in motion um, Will's being exonerated and and let out. Um, so here, as Alana loses control of the narrative, she's being confronted by a journalist who is going to do an expose on everything. And here she is in that same episode at the dinner table with Hannibal and Will, warning them that this journalist is going to do an expose. Um, and now ahead to season three, this is the picture we saw a moment ago where she, where Hannibal is on the loose and she's decided to become basically a vengeance demon and capture him. And more vengeance demoning and Finally, the end of season three, where Hannibal has been jailed and has escaped, and now Alana's life and the life of her whole family are in danger, and they're they're flying off to some distant safe house. And the the same combination is also seen on other characters, including Bedelia Du Maurier. And this is what she's wearing when she is brought in to um, tell Jack Crawford everything she knows about. Hannibal's murdery tendencies. So I'm going to talk about, um, you might recall a black dress from the promos at the beginning of season three. I'm going to talk about the progression of some other interesting symbolism with Alana. So here's the first ever outfit we see Alana in. And you can see that it's red with some black. And then we see another 
dress from the same designer from the same collection in episode six. And this has a lot more black over the area, as if the black is kind of taking in, engulfing her, her body space more. And then in season two, this is where Alana is doing hypnotherapy on Will to get him to remember committing multiple murders. But the problem is that he didn't actually commit those murders. So this is his, his vision of her as he enters the hypnotic trance. He sees her sort of covered in, covered in black sticky oil. And then later on in the season, when Alana understands what an illusion she's been living under, she visualizes herself asleep being in gradually engulfed and submerged in black water and the black water represents Hannibal's influence and then at the beginning of season three this kind of um, symbolizes her being lifted out of that black slimy water out of but she's got strands of that influence still clinging to her and um so, as I said, uh, in the second half of season three, Alana is basically Hannibal's jailer and they're trying to catch the red dragon who is thought to be in phase with the moon. And Hannibal has a rather fancy um, jail cell um, and he's looking up through the window of that jail cell at, at the moon. You'll notice that he's in a gray prison jumpsuit and in these episodes, as Alana tries to persuade Hannibal to help them uh, capture the red dragon, we see that she's getting in into progressively darker shades of gray herself. So she starts out, oh, the clicking isn't working. There we are, she starts out in light gray and then the gray gets darker. And then it's infuriating that you can't properly see this, but this is dark gray with red window pane check, which is very similar to a very famous suit that is, was previously worn by Hannibal. Um, and then now we're into red and black. And so this is where Alana herself realizes that she's actually, she can't actually detach herself from Hannibal's influence while she's acting as his jailer and she's still in his penumbra. And over episodes 11 and 12, Will Graham wears mostly gray outfits. And it's in one of these two episodes while he's visiting Hannibal in jail that he says to Hannibal, you and I are beginning to blur. And so what happens is Hannibal gets busted out of jail and they, he and Will escape to Hannibal's safe house. And you would think that the first thing that Hannibal would put on once he was in a safe house and could wear what he wanted was to get out of that gray prison jumpsuit and into a nice luridly colored plaid suit. But it is actually a strikingly ordinary, hardly plaid at all, gray casual separate set that is very reminiscent of something that Will Graham would wear. So, hmm, does seem like uh, he and Will are beginning to blur. So there's so much symbolism like this and just um, flipping to yet another example is snake prints. Um, snakes are generally an animal that Hannibal wishes to avoid. So snaky snake prints all up in here. And that last dress, the one that Alana wears to at the dinner table to warn Hannibal and Will that this journalist is going to do an expose. Here it is. It looks like a snake print, but it also looks like a fire print. And what happens next, as far as Alana knows, is this that is that the journalist who's about to do an expose on Hannibal and Will is burned to death. But actually, it was all a fake. And this is the journalist greeting Alana to, to let her know that it was all a fake. And so that is interesting as well. The outfits worn by this journalist include many animal costumes, usually predatory animals. Here she is as a poison frog, as a cheetah with a bonus vampire cape over the top, another leopard print. Um, and this is what she wears to Hannibal's dinner table. Uh, surprisingly, she's dressed as a leaf and she reveals that she is a vegetarian, which goes to show that this particular character is kind of a wild card. 
Um, you, you don't know what's coming next from her. And here she is dressed as a ladybug. And you might think, oh, ladybugs are so cute. But have you ever seen a close up of one eating an aphid? And so here's the kind of reveal dress. It's not only a tiger print, but it is a tiger print with plaid. And the complete outfit includes some kind of a lacy dark red jacket that kind of looks like burn, burnt skin, but also kind of like snake skin kind of. So there's just so much of this. And it just goes on and on and on and on. But I will not go on and on and on and on. I will just leave you with my contact details, which in a moment I will copy into the chat. Um, very much, um, very, very, very much costume analysis is in my Tumblr, which I haven't been maintaining. It's not out of lack of interest. It's just that I usually do maintain it on my other laptop, which needs a change of battery, which I haven't managed to get around to doing yet. But there's at least 200 posts on, on there under this hashtag. So, um, and at the top here is the reference to the paper that I have been presenting today. So, any questions from 